What's up folks, welcome to Math Walkthroughs with Mr. Weeb. Today we are looking at describing linear patterns algebraically. These are our lesson three your turn questions. Let's take a look at what we've got for this first question, where it says, write the 100th term in each pattern. The letter N represents the term position. I think the best way to do this is with a table of values. So let's do that. Here's our table of values, where on the left we have our term number or term position or N, all of these interchangeable ways different ways of saying the same thing. It's all just n, which is the term position or term number. We've done this before. And as usual, we have number one, number two, number three, and it goes on forever. Um, then we have our term value. This time, our term value is represented by this algebraic expression. This expression is 20 plus n. So when we're trying to figure out the value of each of these terms, all we need to do is substitute the value of this for our n. So in the first term, you can say instead of 20 plus n, you would just substitute the one for it, which is 21. So the value in the first term is 21. For the second term, you would just go 20 plus two, which is 22. The third term, 20 plus n, in this case, n is replaced by 3. You substitute the 3 for the n. So it's 20 plus 3, where you get 23. I think you can see the pattern. The problem is, if we want to go all the way to 100, um, it's going to take us an awful long time to count to get there. But we can do this easily with algebra by just replacing the n with our 100. So we can say 20 plus 100 is 120, and we have found the value of the 100th term right here. Uh, now we have to do the same thing with this expression. So I'm going to make a, th a third uh, column in this table of values. The process for filling in this third column is very similar to what we did in the second column, where we just take this expression and substitute n for whatever value is right here. So for example, we've got 20 times one in this one because the n in this first case is one. So 20 times one is 20. For the second one, it's 20 times two because n is now worth two. 20 times two is 40. For the third case, it's 20 times three, which will give us 60. I hope you can see that because n, this is n, n is three here, so we substitute that, just like we did for the second column. And then when we wanna know what is it for the hundredth term, we just substitute 100 for the n. So 20 times 100 is going to be 2,000. So our hundredth term is 2000 for B. Next it says, write a pattern rule that uses algebra to describe each pattern. This is a little bit different than the pattern rules that we're used to making. The pattern rules that we were used to making uh, for A would be like, start at seven and add seven each time to get to the next term. I hope you can see that we are just adding seven all the way down the line. But to use algebra, it's a little bit different. Let's make, another, uh, let's make another table of values. One thing that the table of values can help you do is see the relationship between the n and the value. So if, you're, if, you're, if you know your seven times tables really well, you can see that one times seven is seven and two times seven is 14 and three times seven would give you 21. So this means that the term value is just seven times the number, right? Whatever this number is, whatever this number is, you multiply it by seven and you will get your term value. So the pattern rule using algebra here is seven times n. There it is. Then we're going to do the same thing for the next one. Let's add in a column to our table of values. Putting this into the 
uh, table of values doesn't help us quite as much because I don't know my 301 times tables. But I know that 1 times 301 is 301, but 2 times 301 is not 302. That would be 602, right? So it can't be just 301 times n like it was in right here. It can't, it can't just be this first value times this first number. That doesn't make sense. What could make more sense is saying 1 plus 300 because I can add things, right? 1 plus 300 would be 301. 2 plus 300, that gives me 302. 3 plus 300, that gives me 303. I think we've cracked the code just by looking at the patterns. So the, pa the term value would be 300 plus n. And that is, that is the pattern rule using algebra right there because it works. 6 plus 300 gives us 306. Let's have a look at the next question, which says, rewrite the rule for each pattern using this form. Start at some number and add or multiply some number to get to the next term. So here we have 20 times n. Well, what would happen in a table of values? These table of values are gonna be very helpful. So here's the table of values where we are given the rule, right? This is the rule in algebra form. So all we have to do is substitute this n for this n. This n is going to be a different value for each of these spots, for each of these positions in the table of values. So let's do the first one. Instead of 20n, this time it's 20 times one, where you get just 20. For the second term, we substitute the n for a two, and we get 40. For the third, we substitute the n for a three and get 60. For the fourth, we substitute the n for a four and we get 80. So what did we do? Each of these times from one term to the next looks like we're adding 20, doesn't it? We're adding 20 each time. So the sentence that we would make would look something like this. Start at 20 and add 20 to get to the next term. Then we've got another one. It says negative one plus n. Okay, we can add this to our table of values. So here we start with negative one and now we add n. And in the first position, the n is worth one. So negative one plus one is going to give us zero. Then in the second case, we have negative one plus two, which is going to give us one. Then in a the third position, we have negative one plus three, which is going to give us two. And in the fourth, we have negative one plus four. We substitute the n for a four, then we get three. So what is our rule uh, when it comes to the words? It would look like this. Start at zero, because we started at zero, and we add one each time to get to the next term. Okay, lastly, we have, how much more is the 30th term than the 10th term in the pattern 6n? The letter n represents the term position. Once again, I'm going to make a table of values. So here's our table of values, and we can just go down the line and, rep and replace the, the n for whatever value it is at that spot. So here it's six times one, so the value is going to be six. Here it's going to be six times two, and so the value is going to be 12. And in the third position, it's going to be six times three, and the value is going to be 18. And finally, when we get to the 10th position, it's going to be six times 10, which is 60. Now, don't get fooled because just because we have a number that looks something like one of the answers over here, that doesn't mean that this is the answer. We haven't gone all the way yet. It says, how much more is the 30th term? We've only gone to the 10th term, so we actually need to extend our table of values just a little bit at least until we get to the 30th term, okay? So what was the 30th term? It's still 6n, but in this case, the n is worth 30. So we replace the n with a 30, and we go, what's 6 times 3? What's well, 18, and then we can add a 0, so it's 180. Again, you don't want to be fooled just because you have a number that matches one of the numbers in the answer uh, possibilities. 
you have to think to yourself, does this answer the question that was asked? How much more is the 30th term than the 10th term? Well, when it asks you how much more is something, that is a subtraction question. So you want to know how far is it from 60 to 180, right? What would I have to add to 60 to get to 180? That's what it's asking. How much more is 30? So you have to add 120 to 60 to get to 180. So the answer is 120. And that is our final answer on this question. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.